Your maps are going to be taken to a whole new level with the Azure Map Visual. In the latest July 2020 release, it's still in preview mode, but let's have a look at what is already possible and what will be possible going forward. Are you liking my t-shirt? Thank you, Adam from Guy in the Cube for welcoming us to the Power BI community. Really appreciate it. Okay, so what is Azure Maps? So it is a location intelligence platform that is hosted in the cloud on Azure. And with our Azure Map Visual in Power BI, we can connect to that service. So as it is still in preview, we first have to enable it. So let's go to Power BI and enable it first. I'm gonna click here on file and then options and settings, options. And then let's go over here to preview features. And here we have to make sure that we enable Azure Map Visual. Then restart Power BI and we'll be there. So now that we have Azure Maps enabled, you can see it over here in the visualization section. Now let's add, it, add one to our report. So here there's a whole description of how data is shared with TomTom and also what is actually sent to Azure. So here we have the map images and coordinates that are basically necessary to generate the map visualization. Also here it says that the data processing might happen in the United States or any other country. So double check if that is okay for your data. Okay, so let's now resize the image. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So the first thing that you might notice is that there's no location field. So there's only latitude and longitude. So geocoding on the basis of a location field is not possible yet, but will be possible in the future. Okay, so here we have a data set for the Airbnbs in Amsterdam. So I'm gonna take from my location table, the latitude and longitude data, and just drag and drop it onto my visualization. So you see it generates a map for me with all of the Airbnb locations in Amsterdam. And it also already has some slices in place for the type of Airbnb, the price and the review score. So it nicely interacts with all of the other visualizations. So, so far, nothing special yet. Now let's have a look at some of the formatting options. So here we have, first of all, auto zoom. So it zooms in automatically to the right zoom level so that it shows all of your data points. Then we have world wrap. So this is only relevant if you zoomed out all the way. Let me show you. So this is how it looks like with world wrap on. This is how it looks like with world wrap off. Okay, so then we have a style picker. So the style picker is this one over here. We can choose a different style for your map. So I can choose, for example, satellite or light gray. Now here we have also navigation controls, which allow you to zoom in and zoom out. And also what is new is that you can change the pitch. So here I can increase the pitch and I can decrease the pitch. So the angle at which you're looking at your visualization. So where it gets really interesting is with the different layers. So here we have a bubble layer, which is the default, but we can also put different layers on top of it, like a bar layer or a tile layer, which gives more context to our data. Now let's go through all of these different layers one by one, starting off with the bubble layer. So here I'm gonna go to my formatting tab and then to bubbles. First of all, I can change the size. So here we can make it bigger or smaller and you can say what the minimum size should be, what the maximum size should be, and also the scaling method. So linear, log, or cubic, vizier. So it gives you much more scaling flexibility that wasn't there before. So especially the last one, if you go to a website called cubicvizier.com, here you can choose exactly how the curve should be. And so how should the smaller bubbles be versus the bigger ones? And then you just copy over the parameters and fill them out over here in Power BI. So it gives you full flexibility to scaling. That's awesome. Now let's have a further look at what's possible. So here we can set the transparency. So for example, I can put this one here to 50%. Then here I can choose the outline that I want. So maybe I want high contrast. And also here what the transparency should be, the outline, the blur. And what's also interesting is the pitch alignment. So here, if you switch to map, then on first sight, nothing changes. However, if the pitch changes, so meaning this new feature over here, if I increase the pitch, and you see the bubbles, they lay flat on the map. Now, if I change this back to viewport, you see it stand up. 
All right, so that's the difference between the two. Now, if you scroll further down, then you see we also have zoom scale. So when the zoom scale is set to one, that means that basically no scaling happens when you zoom in or zoom out. Now here, if I zoom in, see, bubbles stay the same size, but if I would increase the zoom scale to 10, which is the maximum, you see, they are bigger. And when I zoom out then, the size of my bubbles change, okay? So basically you relate zoom level to the size of the bubbles. When you zoom out of your map visualization, then all of these bubbles, they are just clotted together and doesn't really make sense anymore. And what you can do is set a minimum zoom of let's say 10, so that when you zoomed out, your bubbles don't show. And when you zoom in, your bubbles show again. Now you also see that these bubbles are behind the labels. Okay, so here with layer position, you can change this. So instead of having them below the label, labels, we can say that they should be above the labels or below the roads. Okay, so now you see they're actually below the road level. Now let me change it back to above labels. Now let's also add some color to our visualization. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and then go here to locations, grab neighborhood and put it onto legend. Now you see we have different colors now for the different neighborhoods. Now if we switch to the formatting tab, then you see that there is no legend section yet. However, this will be added also in the future. Let's have a look what is possible with the bar chart layer. So you, first of all, you see that we have now bars as well as bubbles, okay? So we have the two layers combined. Okay, so maybe a little bit too much for now. So let's turn off the bubbles. Okay, now here for the bar shape, we can switch between box and cylinder and also play around with different heights and whether it should scale when you zoom in or zoom out, which generally uh, you probably want to have, otherwise it becomes unreadable. As so you see when I zoom in, uh, the bars get smaller. Okay, so then you can also change the transparency, the minimum zoom level, maximum zoom level, and layer position, just as you could also do with the bubble layer. All right, so that's it for the bar chart layer. Now let's have a look at the next layer, which is gonna be a traffic layer. So here we have the traffic layer. We can turn it on. Uh, the traffic layer overlays these little icons with the current traffic information. So for example, this one, if I click on it, you see that there is now a traffic jam. Uh, over here we have roadworks, okay? So depending on what you're visualizing, it might be an interesting layer to put on top of your map. So the next layer that we are gonna look at is called a reference layer. And it also allows you to add more context to your map by overlaying a secondary spatial data set, which you can build yourself or you can look for some on the internet. And these have to be GeoJSON files. Now let's have a look where you can find them and also how they look like. So I searched for one that has information on the different neighborhoods in Amsterdam. So here I found a GeoJSON file that shows the different neighborhoods in Amsterdam. Okay, so I want to see the underlying code. So let's have a look. So I can copy over this code to any text editor. So here you have this GeoJSON file in my text editor. And you basically have the coordinates that draw polygons on the map. And we have that for all of the different neighborhoods in Amsterdam. And that's it. And Power BI is able to read those and plot them on a map visualization. So let's do this. So I'm gonna go back to Power BI. I'm gonna go here to my reference layer, add local file. I'm gonna select my neighborhood Amsterdam, GeoJSON file. And you see it draws all of the neighborhoods onto my map. So it basically lays this layer on top of the other layers that I have. And the final layer that we're gonna look at is one of the most interesting ones, which is the tile layer. And basically it superimposes an image on top of your map. And it can do this in two ways. So it can be a pre-rendered image that is stored on a server and, and uses a naming convention that your tile layer can read. Now the second option is dynamically rendered images, which uses a service for rendering the images. Now both is possible but they need to follow a certain name and convention, which you can find in the documentation. Now let's have a look how this could look like. So I search for a different map layer for Amsterdam. So here I found the website where 
we have different types of maps from different ages for Amsterdam. So here there's, for example, one from 1876. And you see there's the URL. So it's a static image that's stored on their server. And it also follows a certain naming convention, as you can see. Now, if we take this URL and then go to Power BI, go to Tile Layer, then we can just paste in the URL over here and nothing happens yet. Well, let's zoom in and let's see what happens. Now, it's not so pretty yet. Let's change first of all the pitch, then zoom in a little bit further. And also keep in mind that it overlays on top of the other layer. So it might be that we have to make this layer transparent before we can actually see the underlying bubble layer. So I'm gonna go here, put the transparency up, and you see only now we can see that there's the bubble layer underneath it. So we can unfortunately not change the order of the layers yet, okay? So I hope that this will also be made possible in the future. So you see that Azure Maps is pretty awesome and opens up a lot of new opportunities. However, it's still in preview mode, so it's not perfect yet, but if you wanna play around with it already, then you have to keep in mind that the following things are not possible yet. For example, geocoding on location is not possible. Then also there is no section yet for the legend. Then conditional formatting is not there yet. Labels, also not. And we cannot publish to the web or use embedding. Then also drill through is not there yet. Okay, so keep that in mind. But again, it has amazing potential. And I think when these things get integrated, it will be an awesome new map visualization that we can use in our Power BI reports. Now that's it for now on Azure Maps. Now let's continue this discussion in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of it. And if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. And I hope to see you in the next video. And of course, remember, get one of these cool t-shirts from Guy in the Cube.